Picture this. Dawn is breaking, and you spent the whole night traveling down a lit-up highway, admiring the stars. The stars fade, and you see the sky turn dark orange. But this isn't simply because the sun's coming up. It's because you found yourself in an industrial area full of factories and smokestacks spewing smog into the heavily polluted air. The tainted air not only makes your eyes sting a little, but it also hurts your lungs when you breathe. The realization of what failing your mission would mean hits you with full force. If you don't stop Robotnik here, right now, this will be Green Hill Zone. You think to yourself, mind over matter, as you ignore the toxic fumes fully focused on your mission. Win or lose, this is the end of the journey. Scrap Brain Zone is the sixth and final level in this game. Sort of. I'll explain what I mean on that later on in the video. As you would expect, they pull out all the stops here. You're going to need to bring your A game if you want to survive this place and take out that final boss. With all the crazy mechanized hazards and just overall crazy design, this place looks like how my brain feels at the end of the day at work. Ugh. Now, as always, let's see where Scrap Brain shows up. Of course, it's in the 8 bit version of Sonic the Hedgehog from the Game Gear, Sonic Drift, and even Sonic Superstars Tennis. We also see Scrap Brain in the comics by Fleetway and Archie. Even though it's not necessarily the most popular level, it still shows up in several places. Here's some tasty tidbits of information. In Scrap Brain Zone, there are no bonus rings. That's right, if you didn't get all your emeralds by this point in the game, you aren't getting them or the best ending. Sorry, but them's the breaks. Originally, the zone was going to be named Clockwork Zone, which was referenced to in the manga that was published in 1991 that was released the same year. Act 3 was originally supposed to have a different background, but due to time constraints, they just modified Labyrinth Zone's background a little bit. That's the problem when you have deadlines, I suppose. There's even an issue back then. Sonic Advance has a remix of the Scrap Brain Zone music in the menu. I remember having my Game Boy Advance out with my headphones plugged into it, listening to it, and other music from the game. The level layout for Scrap Brain Act 1 was apparently used in the Game Land area in Sonic Colors for Act 3-2. I guess Starlight Zone wasn't the only thing they borrowed after all. There's technically not a boss fight for Scrap Brain Act 3, we'll kind of get to that in a bit. And your score is also not calculated in Scrap Brain Zone Act 3, or the final boss of the game. And Scrap Brain Zone is the only zone with different backgrounds for each act in this game. That's right, it's extra special. Finally, there's a special path you can take in Act 2 using one of the tube elevators if you have at least 50 rings. We'll cover that in more detail though once we get to Act 2. Now normally at this point in the video we'd analyze the background, but we're going to do it as we get to each level because those backgrounds are different for each act. Difficulty and feel. Let's face it, this is the end of the game and it's gonna be hard. Though we don't see a lot of enemies for much of Scrap Brain, we see many, many environmental hazards. I'm rating this a solid 8.5 out of 10 for difficulty. It isn't exactly hell on Mobius, but it's tough and you're likely going to lose lots of rings, and if it's your first time, probably several lives. You may even just get a game over. Hope you have some continues handy, otherwise it's back to the title screen for you. Let's cover the environmental hazards. Environment is your biggest enemy in Scrap Brain. They went crazy with these things. First you have drowning. Yep, you have water at one point, and you can drown. Saw blades. These show up in both Act 1 and 2. Better watch out for them. But at least I warned you. Now you can never say you never saw it coming. Electric shocker. At least that's what I call it. These things just kind of sit still, and they're usually on the floor and ceiling, and they send out electrical waves. Swinging spike ball on a chain. Yes, the old classic comes back here, too. 
Fireball launching statue straight from Labyrinth Zone. Now in Act 3 of Scrap Rain. Getting crushed. There are several ways you can get crushed in this level. There's sliding platforms and cylinders that'll be more than happy to crush you as well. Rotating platforms. These things aren't necessarily dangerous themselves, but uh, if you miss the spinning platform, you might end up falling down and dying. Disappearing platforms. Same kind of thing. They're there one second and then they're not. And if you're on them when they're not there, well, you might fall down into a pit. Folding platforms. These red things are really annoying. They just suddenly open up and if you're on top of them, you might just fall down into a pit as well. Now, not only are there several environmental hazards to worry about, but you also have several bad nicks that are going to come after you. Of course, the bomb comes back yet again from Starlight Zone, and of course you can't defeat these guys, you just have to avoid them and let them explode. Caterkiller makes a comeback as well. Better make sure you bop these guys in the head, otherwise they'll break into parts and hit you. Ball hog. This little piggy isn't a hog at all. It believes sharing is caring and nothing says you care more than a bouncing exploding ball. Sometimes it's better not to share. Jaws. Jaws is going to make a comeback here. Again, not really much of a threat, but he's back from Labyrinth Zone. Speaking of back from Labyrinth Zone, let's take a look at Burrowbot. He's going to show up here too. Doing what he does best, jumping out of the ground, trying to surprise the crap out of you. Sometimes at the worst time. Now let's take a look at Act 1 in depth. In the foreground, we're on a platform that's a metal construction of sorts that's covered with pipes and caution signs. I guess even Robotnik is afraid of OSHA. After all, why would he be worried about safety when he's the only human working there? Some of these pipes seem to be ruptured and periodically shoot out flames. Now if we look in the background, the first layer that's closest to us, we see some very dark looking buildings with some red lights or windows. It's hard to tell what they are. Then behind that, we have some lighter colored, but still relatively dark red buildings with what seem to be windows or different types of lights. Go even further back, and it looks like you've got smokestacks in the background. And of course, there's that nasty, off-yellow-looking air. Definitely a sign that maybe the air quality here isn't that great after all. So now let's take a quick look at that level map. Now that we've taken a look at the map, let's take a look at each individual route in detail. Route 8 comes out of the gate swinging if you aren't paying attention. You start off on a metal platform with some rings in front of you, which leads to a red platform. Depending on how quickly you move forward, the flaps will either be up or they'll be open down. Either way, if you're over top it when it opens, you're gonna fall down into a pit. And that's what they want you to do, because they put three rings over top of each of these. What a nasty little trick. Definitely something we'd expect from Dr. Robotnik at this point. Continue along and avoid a couple of pipes that are shooting fire into the air. We're going to call these fire pipes moving forward. And these things are surrounding a caterpillar. You'll need to be patient or have some decent jumps to get through this one untouched. Next, you see a rotating wheel with a notch in it and a switch. For out A, we're going to hit that switch and go to the right. This will put us in an area that's going to be a little bit of a tight fit. You have these large metal platforms that move around within these grooves, and you need to not get squished by it, by either being above or below them. Work your way through the grooves all the way down to the bottom. Just need a little patience for this part, but if you're playing Sonic Origins, watch out, because those hitboxes can be pretty janky here, and you might end up dying for no good reason. Down below, you're going to have some shockers on the ceiling and a few caterkillers on the ground. Jumping onto or over the caterpillars is risky because of those shockers up above, so your best bet is to roll through this area. Go through a gate and run into some platforms that'll appear and disappear. Get your timing right and you can make it up to the top. You can even grab a shield as a reward. Next, you have to jump over a shocker to reach a goal post. Just don't jump too far or the second shocker will hit you. Kind of a jerk move, don't you think? If you think they've turned up the heat for this zone, you're right, because you have two flames shooting up ahead of you to get past. 
and then a spinning platform pulley. These lead to other platforms that appear and disappear, and you'll need to buy some time by jumping back onto some other platforms that aren't going to be spinning so you can make it across. A lot of people fall here. The next part can be a blur as you speed past some floors that open up. You can jump to avoid any open areas if you time it right. Make it across through a gate and find some red platforms that disappear when you jump on them and a switch. You must make sure the red platforms are in place and then hit the switch and quickly jump to the top before the platforms pull out from underneath you or the gate closes up top. If you have some trouble here, it's because you're too slow. Make it to the top and now you need to make it over two sets of spinning platforms. Make it past the dangers and you'll meet some ball hogs. As you make your way up, blow past them and you're right at the goalpost. That's it for Route A. Now, let's say you want a brave path B. Well, you must be quite the glutton for punishment because this is by far the hardest path to get through in the act. Like path A, you're going to get to the rotating metal cylinder with a notch in it. However, you don't hit that switch. You just get sent straight down. By this point, you folks probably know how I feel about the lower paths in any act, for the most part, except maybe Act 3 of Labyrinth Zone. Which, by the way, if you didn't watch that deep dive video, you really should. Like in Path A, you're going to have a section with moving platforms that can crush you if you're above or below them. This will require a little bit of speed at times and a lot of patience. Personally, I would suggest rolling. That way you can avoid getting crushed. Once you make it to the bottom, you're going to have to be careful because there's a pipe shooting fire and there's a red trap spring that'll knock you back into the fire if you don't watch out for it. Yeah, I love those trap springs. Now it's time for the crusher gauntlet. This is going to take a little bit of finesse to get through here. Move too early or too late and you can get crushed and you need to make it past a total of five of these things. Once you get past the crushers, go up a ramp and wait, because you're going to have a couple of runaway saw blades flying at you that'll rip you to shreds. Or at least make you drop your rings. Now if you do end up moving fast enough to avoid those blades, you're going to have to be careful because you'll probably run into a pipe that's shooting fire. Oh, and one last saw blade. Now if you thought that was crazy, you're going to have several bombs up on the ceiling and a caterpillar. You'll need to make the jump just right to get over the caterpillar and avoid the bombs, or be patient and wait for the bombs to explode before jumping over or destroying the caterpillar. Hitting the caterpillar by jumping on it can make you bounce up into the air high enough to touch one of those bombs, and then you're going to lose your rings. Oh, and don't get me started on those red floors that'll open up as soon as you step on or by them. Just be careful. Next, you're going to get past another caterpillar and two fire pipes. Now they're going to put you through another crusher gauntlet, but this one's going to be a bit harder because right after the first crusher, there's going to be a pipe shooting fire out. If you time this wrong, then the flames might knock you back and you'll land on top of the crusher, which will then crush you. Not only that, but the third one has the same thing going on, so you're going to have to be extra careful here. Remember when I said this was the hardest path? Well, that was for good reason. Once you get through that section, you're going to need to make some short jumps to get up over a few platforms and avoid the shockers up on the ceiling. Oh, and watch out for that fire. Again, they place rings where the shockers can get you to tempt you into making a bad move. Get past several shockers and fire pipes, and now you're going to have a couple of spinning platform pulleys to get past. Jump to the next platform before yours starts spinning, or you'll fall down, and falling here means certain death. Get past that section, quickly run over the crumbling ledge, and make your way to the right where we'll find three ring boxes. It isn't much of a reward, and three ring boxes is likely not going to do you any good at this point, but hey, it's something, right? Oh, by the way, there's a ball hog with some bouncing exploding bombs, and he's going to start throwing them at you. Work your way up the ramp and avoid the bombs. This section actually kind of reminds me of the old Donkey Kong game where Donkey Kong rolls barrels at you down some sloped platforms. Work your way up and bang, you're at the goalpost. That's it for Route B. All right, now let's take a look at Route C. At the metal cylinder with the notch, you're going to hit the switch and it's going to shoot you out on the right hand side. 
However, this time we aren't going to the right. We're going up. Get your timing right and get past the spinning platforms and maybe collect a shield power up on the left before crossing back over to the right side. Just watch out for those caterkillers. You'll find yourself at a ledge where you can go up or you can drop down. If you drop down, you'll get two ring boxes. Work your way back up the disappearing platforms and you'll run into bombs. Let them explode or jump over them and the fire pipe. And now, jump over a gap using more of the disappearing platforms. Take too long and, or miss a jump, and you'll fall. Eventually, you'll get some solid ground and find a shield and a ring box. Here, you're probably going to want to take a leap of faith. Walk just off the edge and you should land on a rotating platform pulley that leads to another one, which leads to another one. Get across this section and avoid the fire pipe, and you'll have to make it across a few rotating platforms. If you fall, You'll be sent down to Route A. Now you're going to see another metal round object with a notch in it that rotates. Write it down and it'll shoot you through some tubes and take you to another section with moving platforms that can crush you. Once you get past that, you just have to avoid some fire pipes below and you'll be on Route A where you finish the level. By the way, did you know there's a Route D? For D's nuts! I <laughs> got him! This one's my favorite, not just because I get to make a childish joke out of it, but because this is the high path, and you know how I feel about being high. I would also argue this is the easiest path. This one starts out the same pathing as Route C, until you get to that second metal spinning cylinder. Hit that switch and fly it on the right hand side. Grab the well deserved checkpoint, and either use the disappearing platforms on the wall on your left to get that shield and two ring boxes, or just continue to the right across more disappearing platforms to get across the gap. You'll have yet another section of moving platforms that can crush you. Yes, every major path has these. Head to the right and boom, you merge onto Route A. Pretty easy, huh? Now at this point you might be wondering, is there a way I can get through this level without any of those slow moving platform sections? Actually, there is. You would need to start out on Route C and then drop down before the second rotating cylinder and take Route CA. However, that could leave you with some bigger issues because if you mess up on Route A down below, you might end up on Route B, and then you'll have to deal with some crazy fire pipe nonsense and rotating platform pulleys. Alright, now let's move on to Act 2. Right off the bat in Act 2, we can tell that we're in a different location now. It looks like we're inside of a factory. A factory of death. We're still walking on metal constructions, and there's metal walls and pipes and blinking lights in the background. And if you look really hard at some of the lights, it almost looks like it makes a face. The blinking lights creating faces in the background happens in other Sonic games too. Coincidence? I think not. Alright, now let's take a look at the level map. We start out with a straight path with some rings. Soon you run into a fire pipe and some disappearing platforms. Ideally you jump onto the disappearing platforms, otherwise you'll land below where there's several shockers waiting for you. Jump onto a round spinning metal thing and either run or spin. Whee! And then fling yourself to another one until you get to a platform with a switch and hit it. You hit that switch and move right, avoiding the caterpillars and some fire. Then you will find a strange device that looks kind of like an elevator tube thing. I love these things when they show up in Sonic games. This will send you to the floor below. Here you have a ring box and spinning platforms. You need to be careful and time your jumps just right so you can get across the three levels of the spinning platforms. Otherwise, you'll have a shocking surprise down below. This one gets a lot of people the first few times, but this is only the beginning. You go through a gate and immediately set off a bomb on the ceiling and run into a conveyor belt with spinning saws. Yep, should have saw that one coming. What's more, the conveyor belt is pushing you back so you'll need to get your momentum up to be able to move forward. 
and avoid the bomb that's about to explode and the giant saw. Next, you're going to go into a tube evader and get sent down to another floor. Or is it up? I don't know. The level wraps around and it's pretty crazy. It definitely reflects the mind of an evil villain turning furry woodland creatures into robots. Or just someone with too much free time on their hands that loves to watch people suffer. You get a few more conveyor belts and saws to deal with. This time the belts send you to the right so you'll move more quickly. Which could send you right into a saw if you aren't careful. They pulled the old switcheroo on us. Next, you'll have to get over two platforms that fold down with a shocker below. Jump over the gap or time your run right, because you don't want to be stuck below these things. Oh, and they throw in fire pipes for good measure. They can hit you and knock you back so you fall into the shocker pit trap. This is pure evil manifesting as the design of this act. Find another tube of Vader and it'll send you up a floor. Now you're going to find some fire and spitting platform. For those of you that are adventurous, you can go down through the platform and find two ring boxes. Hey, it's something, right? Then you must make your way back up. By the way, it'll probably be a pain to get back up and require some well-timed jumps. Head toward the gate and a runaway saw blade flies at you, so be careful. You also have another tight jump with a shocker and a caterkiller. If you jump over, you'll likely land on the conveyor belt that'll push you toward the giant saw. Now you have a couple of ways to approach this room. Go from conveyor belt to conveyor belt to get across, or simply drop down and hit that spring and hope you don't get hit by the spiky ball on a chain below. Personally, I'd take the lower path. Don't worry, we're almost done with Route A. Now you're going to be forced to get past a shocker, which you'll likely want to roll under, a crusher, and a lot of bombs. Once you get past these, jump down the edge of the platform and grab a shield as a reward. Do it right, and you can bounce back up. Hit a switch and avoid the fire. Now you have another ramp area, but instead of several ball hogs, you'll just run into some spike balls on a chain. However... If you go to the top, you'll find a ball hog and an invulnerability power-up, which might be worth grabbing. You make your way down and eventually to more swinging balls and a goalpost. That's it for Route A. Oh wait, there's one last thing about Route A. Remember this section? Well, there are some hidden goodies you can grab here. Four ring boxes and a 1-up or an anniversary coin, depending on the version of the game you're playing. Pretty awesome, right? Just requires some exploring and willingness to get through some tough parts. Alright, let's take a look at Route B now. Route B starts at the spinning wheels at the beginning of the level. Once you make your way all the way to the top of the room, where you find a different switch that'll roll out a platform to help you get across the gap. Now you have a folding platform to get over and a red trap spring that'll send you down the hole if the flaps are open, or maybe all the way across which would then force you to get back over the flaps. How many times can you win a coin flip? Just remember not to jump too high or the shockers will hit you. Oh, and watch out for those flames. You will then enter another room with a ring box down below. Have some more fun with these spinning platforms and grab a shield up at the top and continue to the right. Here you have conveyor belts. The first sends you toward the right, the second one pushes you toward the left. And the last one... They really want to mess with you here, and avoiding those spike balls will involve a lot of careful movements. Finally, you can take a tube evader that'll send you down. They pull another pulley switcheroo, but with this time with crushers. Then a shocker. Again, due to how tight the space is, you're better off rolling under these. Your reward for getting past there is another tube evader that sends you down another floor. Or is it up? Man, level wraps are crazy. Continue on and get over to the disappearing platforms. Now if you want, you can drop down here and grab two ring boxes and a one up. Just watch out for the shockers below. At this point, you have more conveyor belts and giant saws and even a runaway saw blade to avoid, which leads to another tube evader. This leads to a ramp area that goes pretty much directly to the goalpost. That's all for Route B. Now 
Route C is kind of a secret route. For this route, you'll follow along Route A and enter one of the tube evaders after the section with the pull down platforms, fire pipes, and shockers. Now the next part will vary depending on the version of the game you're playing. If you're playing the original Sonic the Hedgehog, you'll get transported and have to re-enter the tube evader to get transported for a second time to a higher level. However, if you're playing Sonic Origins, you only need to enter it once, you'll arrive at the floor above, and then it'll hesitate for a second and shoot you up to a third floor. Pretty neat, huh? The trick is keeping at least 50 rings, and that's no easy task in this zone. Once you arrive at the secret floor, you just have to make it the rest of the way. Go past a fire pipe and some crumbling floors, and over some conveyor belts with shockers on the ceiling. Honestly, this part is easy. Just make sure you run instead of roll. On the other side, you'll hit a tube evader that'll wrap you around to the bottom section of the ramp area. You'll merge back onto Route A, and boom, you're past Act 2 Scrap Rain Zone. This is it, folks, the final act of Scrap Rain. We're almost done with the game. But what's this? We fell into one of Robotnik's traps and landed in some kind of reskinned version of Labyrinth Zone. It seems that these factories might have been built over top of sunken ruins, and the water is even purple from all of the pollution. Who knows what they dumped into the water? Anyway, just like Labyrinth Zone, we see stone and brick tiles both in the background and the foreground. Some even have little faces on them. Really isn't too much to say since we've already looked at this tile set before. Now let's take a look at the level map. Let's take a look at Route A. Most people are likely going to end up taking Route A their first time, especially if they're a bit slow starting out. You start out next to a switch that moves a sliding platform down, then you make it across and to the left. You're greeted by our old friend, Burrowbot. Make it past him and a fireball launching statue and another Burrowbot, and get to an area with a ring box and another Burrowbot. At this point, you drop down and land in some nasty, polluted purple water and make your way to the left. Get by an Orbanaut and several Burrowbots and a spiky ball on a chain. Then hit a switch and take a deeper plunge into more toxic water, grabbing a ring box on the way down to the bottom. Jaws makes a comeback down here. Part of the way down to the left, there's an Orbanaut guarding a 1-up box. Feel free to grab that, because you may very well need it. Make your way down to the bottom and hope RNG is kind to you and gives you an air bubble. Get past some spike balls on a chain and make your way to a switch and hit it. Then make your way to another switch and hit it. If you go left instead, you can find a red spring that'll give you some rings. Just be careful about the rising platform that spawns under the spikes. You go right and drop down, grab another air bubble and a checkpoint. Get past some more spike balls and past a burrow bot and an Orbanaut. Be careful because the air bubbles here could actually get you hit by the Orbanaut. Make your way up to another switch and press onward. Careful when you get to the Orbanaut because you'll get sucked toward the Orbanaut. Grab some air and press onward after the haul. Go up past some fireball launchers and burrow bots and get some rings and head left to another checkpoint. From here you'll go back into the water, avoid the Orbanaut and the burrow bot that is right under the rotating spike ball on a chain and make some short jumps. Then hit that switch and pray for some air. RNG can get you killed pretty easily here. Make your way up the cliff with several spike balls and jump on the red spring to finish the act. Now, if you want a shortcut, you could take Route A2, which is pretty simple. Once you get past the sliding platforms, you make your way to the water, land on one of the falling blocks, and ride it all the way down to the bottom. It's a lot quicker than going all the way around. Route B is going to be the fastest route through the act. This time, you're going to rush in front of the sliding platform and get below it. Hit a switch and make it past a few pointy sticks and rotating spike balls and past some fireball launchers. 
They throw everything at you all at once for this shortcut. Grab some air and make your way up the spike ball cliff and you finish the act. Easy peasy. Now you do have a couple of offshooting routes that you can take, but I would not suggest those. However, if you want, you can take Route BA1. For this, we drop down after the spears and the spike balls and miss those fireball launchers. You'll drop down a bit more and eventually you'll hit a switch and you'll merge onto Route A for Route BA2. You're going to get past the fireball launchers again and this time you're going to drop down to the bottom, hopefully collecting some rings on the way down and maybe even get that ring box that I missed there. Then you're going to hit a switch and open a door and work your way up to the other switch with some shallow jumps. And I'll take you to the end of the level with the spike balls and the red springs. That's it for Act 3. Now time for the final boss. So once you hit those red springs from Act 3, you're going to be sent to a place called Final Zone. This is technically part of Act 2, Scrap Rain Zone, but they separated it. Some people consider this to be an actual zone. Again, I consider this to be part of Scrap Rain. Now right off the bat, you know that this is the climax of the game. The final act. Just listen to that music. Admittedly, when I heard this music as a kid, it scared the heck out of me. I ran out of the room and had to have somebody shut off my Sega Genesis for me. That's how much it freaked me out back then. Move to the right and you'll end up in a room with crushers that'll randomly activate, or mostly randomly activate depending on the version of the game you're playing. In the original Sonic, there's a way that you can do things to control the randomness, but we're not going to get into that in this video. Robotnik will be inside of one of the two activated crushers and you need to jump and hit him. The spark balls at the top will form in between attempts to crush you and they'll float downward. You can kind of move left and right to avoid the balls and make them fly in a direction away from you. As a kid, this boss was a little tough, but later on when I tried to play this again, it seemed so ridiculously easy. Once you get enough hits in, Robotnik jumps out and into his egomatic and tries to flee. Here you actually have two choices. You can either let him fly away unharmed, or you can give him one more hit to send him flying downward. Either way, it doesn't really matter or affect the end of the game. Now what will affect the end of the game is whether or not you collected all those Chaos Emeralds or not. I could tell you what happens in the ending, but I'm not going to. Why spoil the surprise, right? Anyway, that's the end of the game and the end of this series for this game. I hope you enjoyed these videos, and if you want to see more for another Sonic game, definitely let me know. I hate asking folks this, but please give me a thumbs up or even subscribe to the channel if you like this or any of my other videos. It just helps the channel grow and it gets these videos out in front of more people. It's just the way that YouTube works, whether we like it or not. I want to thank all those that supported me and told me to keep going with these videos because really, especially early on, I was thinking about not doing these. They weren't getting very many views and it takes me days to make these. And I know they're not super great professional quality. I'm a one-man team and I've had no training on video editing or audio editing, so I've done all this as I've learned how to do it. But hey, maybe you don't like my channel or my videos. That's fine. At least check out Vital Wave and take a look at some obscure music channel on YouTube. They were kind enough to let me use their remixes in this video, so please give them a follow and check out their work. I have links to their channel and the music that I used, both in the credits here and also in the description down below. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank Sega, because without Sega, there'd be no Sonic and these videos wouldn't exist. I'm not entirely sure what project I want to work on next, but maybe I'll put it up to a community vote to see what people want. Um, or feel free to even leave a comment on this video and tell me what you'd like to see me work on next. Also, don't forget that I usually stream at least two days a week. Feel free to check it out. I usually post my schedule on my YouTube channel in the community section, so keep an eye out for my schedule postings. That's all for now, though, so thank you. I hope you have a great rest of your day, but for now, this is Asian Eyes, signing off.